Oh, hey, just dusting off my combat patch, you know, no, no big deal. Sometimes it's a little bit dusty, but I understand you're here because you want to know about some things that you can and can't do in a combat zone. Well, you came to the right guy. Let's talk about it. So, one thing you probably want to be aware of though is that some of the things I'm talking about in here kind of also depend on like at what point in that deployment you're you're at, like how far into that deployment, how is it a new combat deployment, is it a new kind of conflict that's going on, or is it something that's been established for a little while? Because obviously if it's let's say a brand new type of deployment, it's you know pretty new into the conflict type of thing, then there's gonna be a lot of the things that I'm gonna talk about in here that you can do that you probably can't do because you, you won't have the resources to be able to do those kinds of things. So a lot of what I'm talking about inside of here is like a deployment that's pretty well established, like Iraq, still a combat deployment that's going on type of thing, or any other type of deployment that's a combat deployment where it's been going on for a little bit. So some resources have been established already. People have asked me like before, like, can you play video games, right? Can you bring a PlayStation, Xbox, a computer to, to play some video games on? And yes, you could do that. Uh, I had actually a roommate who brought his PlayStation, I think it was a three, maybe a four, I don't remember, but he brought his PlayStation with him on the second deployment and he would play like Madden and all sorts of other games while we're, we're having some, like, some downtime. You probably can't bring like some high-speed PC to play some gaming computers, maybe if you have a decent laptop type of thing. Uh, some of the times it also may depend on like where you're at because if you're gonna be somewheres that you're living in like some crappy ass tent or something like that, you probably don't want to do that kind of a thing. I mean, the hard thing too is that if you're bringing like a gaming console, then you also need a TV, so you need to be somewheres where you can be able to have that room for that. So that may depend on the deployment as well. I mean, a safer bet might be like a laptop, right? If you have a laptop that can play some games on it, that'd probably be the easier route to go if you want to play some games when you do have the downtime to be able to do that and how much downtime you get, that really just depends. I've known people that had a lot of downtime and I've known people that had like barely any downtime other than trying to get some sleep. So it, it definitely depends on the mission and what's kind of going on. Something you won't be able to do is drink alcohol. So if you're pretty dependent on that kind of a thing, you might have a problem for one, uh, but two, uh, you're, you're not gonna be able to drink alcohol over there. Have people drink alcohol over there? Yeah, of, of course. There is people that have drank alcohol over there, but you're not allowed to. It's against the rules, against the policies. You're not allowed to drink alcohol. The only exception I've seen with that was like during the Super Bowl. We had opportunities where if you wanted to go watch the Super Bowl at the defect, like at two o'clock in the morning over there in Iraq, for that example, uh, you were allowed to do that. And they had an opportunity for you to drink two beers. And there was people that found ways around getting more beers than they're allotted to, but that was the only exception I have ever seen of people being allowed to drink alcohol. Outside of that, people drinking alcohol, that's because they got it smuggled in, they had ways of getting alcohol, and sure, they did do it, but you weren't allowed to. The only ways that I've seen you're allowed to was in that exception of the Super Bowl. If you're looking to stay fit and get swole on that deployment, well then, make sure you get yourself some Chaos Kettlebells, link in the description box down below. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, uh, not really, this is just a kettlebell with a Chaos sticker on it. but. There are opportunities where you can still work out. They do have gyms at some locations. Sometimes people just have makeshift types of gyms and they kind of do it that way. Ugh. Okay, let's put that down. But there are opportunities. The, both my deployments, we had like a small makeshift gym. We had a pretty good one actually in my second deployment when I was in Baghdad. But first one, I think it was kind of like a makeshift one that was kind of just some gym equipment they had inside of a hangar area and you can kind of use it that way. Actually, I think later in the deployment they actually got a more established gym that was actually a really nice one. But sometimes it just depends. Like if you're in one of those more remote outposts kind of things, you might have a makeshift gym. Uh, it really just depends on where you're at. But there are some opportunities where you can kind of work out because you don't usually do PT in the morning. We kind of did PT a little bit during my second deployment, but not during my first deployment. So usually it's kind of like on you to stay in shape and everything. So utilizing the gym or finding other ways to kind of work out usually is on you. So you will still have opportunities to kind of work out to stay in shape because you might even still have to do PT tests. You might still have to do the ACFT maybe a little bit harder than like when it was the P APFT or the, you know, regular PT test that it had back then kind of environment. But with the ACFT and all that equipment, it makes it a little bit more challenging, but could still be a thing you still have to do. Some of you horn dogs out there probably want to know, can I hook up with someone, have sex while I'm deployed? And no, that is something you're not allowed to do 
while deployed. Does it happen? Yeah, I've known several people that hooked up during deployments and everything, but you're not allowed to do that. The only kind of exception I ever saw with that was on my second deployment. We had some individuals that were married and their spouse was also deployed with them. Maybe they're in a different troop, a different unit. They're in that area. Those individuals were actually allowed to engage in sexual activity with each other, but nobody else was allowed to do that. There's probably some people in the comments that are gonna be weirdos and be like, well, what about if I wanna have sex myself? I don't, I don't know if that's really considered sex, but sure, whatever kind of a thing. Nobody, there's no rules against that, I don't think. I don't, I've never heard of it at least, but I'm talking about with a partner, with someone else, okay? That kind of a thing, not allowed, unless maybe your unit has a policy like I had with my second deployment where married couples that were deployed together were allowed to. Something that you can do is bring back souvenirs. People have asked me that before, like, hey, can I bring back some souvenirs? As long as it's not something that's considered a war trophy. If you're trying to bring back a souvenir and it's like the ear of your enemy that you killed or a weapon from an enemy you killed or something that otherwise could be considered a war trophy, no, you can't bring those back. But other souvenirs, sure. I have several things. I mean, I have like some Iraqi money that I brought back and I've got like some other random stuff. I think they have like a little, it's called like a bazaar where you can like buy some stuff. I have like a blanket. I think I've got some pirate DVDs, you know, of like, not like pirates, like Pirates of the Caribbean, although there might be, but I'm talking about like pirated DVDs, that movies that are pirated kind of a thing that they would sell there. I have some of those and other random things that you can buy kind of like locally within like the base or whatever. But other things too, like if you had something that's not considered a war trophy, usually your unit will outline and kind of tell you like what you can and can't bring and or bring back. You can always probably even check with your leadership, be like, hey, I found this thing while on mission. Can I keep it? Can I bring it back with me? And they'll probably let you know, but you can bring back souvenirs as long as it's not something that's considered a war trophy. For some people, this may seem obvious, but you can't have visitors. I, I, I feel like that could be a possible question someone could ask, be like, hey, can family come visit me? I mean, that's kind of weird. I don't think that's even possible really to get your family to that location and usually in the case, but you can't have visitors. So don't expect that, you know, mom, dad, brother, sister, whoever, girlfriend, boyfriend is gonna come visit me while I'm deployed on this combat deployment because that's not gonna happen. If it's maybe a non-combat deployment, maybe, sure, there might be some opportunities, but combat deployments, no, don't, don't expect to be able to have visitors. This one's specifically geared towards those people out there that maybe are talking to someone that's deployed kind of a thing, but uh, you can call loved ones and even video chat with loved ones if that's what you wanna do. The tricky thing with it is the internet quality is not often very good. So video chatting sometimes is a pain in the ass. It doesn't get very good quality. So your best bet usually is a phone call. You can do it by utilizing like the Red Cross sometimes has a location there. Sometimes you have other kind of resources that allows you to be able to call home. And then even a lot of times you might have a cell phone that you might be able to utilize too. I had like a really shitty cell phone in Iraq that didn't get very good service and you had to pay for like a little prepaid card and be able to use it that way and call home and it was a horrible connection. So most of the time I preferred to like use the phones at the Red Cross or somewhere else, but you could do that. As far as like video chatting, that really just depends on your internet connection. Most of the time the internet connection isn't very good. So the quality of it might be really garbage and really horrible, but there is not a thing where you're not allowed to do that. I know that's a common scam that goes on with scammers saying they're like, well, I'm not allowed to video chat with you because it's against security. No, you can video chat. Obviously you couldn't video chat inside of a secure area. They wouldn't even have the available resources for you to do that. Of course you can't do that. But back at your room, back at wherever you're staying at, whatever, sure. If you have a good enough internet you know, connection, you could video chat, you can call home. And they encourage that because it's definitely a morale booster and they don't want people getting all sad and depressed and everything while we're on a combat zone. So making sure that you know people stay motivated, talk to their loved ones, talk to their friends back home, is definitely encouraged, so they want you to do that when you have the time to do so. I've even seen it a few times where they'd be like, hey, so-and-so, when was the last time you talked to your family? And they'd be like, oh, it's been a couple weeks. Go, go call them, head on over to the Red Cross, make sure you give them a call, let them know you're doing okay, and let you know, let them know what's going on in your life. So yeah, you, you can talk to loved ones, and if you have the available resources to video chat, sure, you can definitely video chat. Does the lens look a little dirty to you guys? Is that better? That's better. How about some sweet tattoos while you're on that deployment? No, can't do that. I've known people that have, and they don't want you to do that because mainly because it 
can be a little bit difficult to take care of a tattoo while under deployment, depending especially depending on the environment type of thing, but it can be difficult to take care of it. So usually they don't want you to do that, but I have seen people do that. I actually had a guy that I knew, he was in the, he was in the maintenance section of, uh, of my unit, and he had a tattoo gun, and he was kind of newish, I think, to, to doing tattoos, and he gave a few people some small tattoos, but, you know, it was in areas where nobody was gonna see it, and it kind of a thing, unless you started, like, bragging about it, but otherwise, you can't. I, I've known people that have wondered, wondered that, and been like, hey, if my buddy brings a tattoo gun, can you start giving out tattoos while we're on this deployment, kind of a thing. No, people do it, but it's not something that's allowed. That's the main reason with it is taking care of it. You know, you can get infected, which could decrease your ability to be effective in that combat zone type of thing. So that's usually why it's not allowed while in a combat zone. You probably want to, there's not even a viewfinder on this. Why am I doing that? You probably want to have an opportunity to take some photos, take some videos, to be able to go make some vlogs kind of a thing, maybe while you're deployed, and you can do that. Sometimes it has to get checked and cleared before you post it on the internet type of thing, but I did that. I, I posted, I, you know, posted some photos that I was allowed to post kind of a thing on social media. I recorded some video while I was deployed both times and made a few videos out of it. And it was like a thing where I was supposed to like get the video footage cleared through our, was S2, the security individuals, and they had to review it to make sure it wasn't like leaking anything that they're not supposed to show type of thing. And you know, it was all good to go. So yeah, you can take photos, you can be a tourist a little bit, you know, snap some shots to show the family, capture some video, vlog if you really wanted to while on that deployment, if you have the opportunity to do so, and have some cool video footage to be able to share with family and friends when you get back. That's usually the key thing though, is like security wise, you don't wanna obviously be like taking photos of things you're not supposed to take photos of, taking video of things you're not supposed to take videos of, posting that stuff to the internet. So a lot of stuff usually has to get cleared through like your S1, but sure, you wanna snap some photos, record some video, do a little, little vlogging while you're over there, you could possibly do that. Now, one last thing I'll let you know that you won't be able to do while you're over there, and that is wear civilian clothing. Uh, that's discouraged for one, because you know, we gotta identify you as military type of thing, but Two, it's just, just not a thing you're just allowed to do. I mean, it kind of sucks. I mean, some people would kind of get away with it like for sleeping in type of thing, but even then a lot of times they would want you to sleep in like your physical fitness uniform. But when you're not working, you're not on a mission, you can't just like wander around the post on the fob, the camp or whatever in civilian clothing. They want you to stay in uniform at all times. So they would, would have you like bring like a set of civilian clothing. That way if you had to go on emergency leave then you have that set of civilian clothing to, to wear while you're traveling back. That way they hopefully can kind of almost disguise you, I guess, as not being military kind of a thing. I don't know, but they would allow you to have that one set, but outside of it, you weren't really allowed to wear civilian clothing. That's the only kind of thing that I've seen people get away with is sleeping in it. But like I said, even, even then, sometimes they wanted you to sleep like in your physical fitness uniform. So a good handful of things you can and can't do in a combat zone. If you have been deployed to a combat zone, I wanna hear about in the comment section down below. What are some things that maybe you could or couldn't do? Some of these things that I told you that you can't do. Maybe you have some cool stories or funny stories about people that did those things. Maybe like getting wasted, getting tattoos, getting things that they weren't supposed to be doing while on that combat zone. So maybe drop some comments down below. If you have some questions about some things, maybe you wanna know, hey, can I do this on a combat deployment? Can I not do this? Whatever kind of thing, maybe drop those in the comment section down below and I'll try to maybe answer some good portion of them. And then some of my veteran viewers out there can probably also help me out and answer those questions as well. Now, hold up. I know that you're ready to close out of this video, but don't do it just yet because there's a video right here that is bomb diggity bomb that you have to go check out. Go watch that thing. If you haven't seen it yet before, then go check it out. If you've already seen it before, watch it again. Go check it out. Check out my links down in the description box down below. I'm Christopher Chaos. I'll see you next time. See ya.